Hello, and this is John Frausto with TopspinTennis.com. In this video, I'm going to do a compare and contrast uh, with Roger Federer's, Novak Djokovic's, and Jack Sock's forehands. And the reason why I picked those three individuals is because they all use a different grip, for the most part, on their forehand. Uh, Roger Federer uses an eastern forehand grip. Novak Djokovic uses a semi-western grip. And Jack Sock uses a western grip. I hope you enjoy the video. All right, so uh, currently uh, Roger and Novak are in the ready position. They're, they're establishing a, a good split step. And what, what I'll do is just to kind of uh, fill you in with the video is I'll, I'll compare Roger and Novak. Then I'll go on to compare Novak and Jack Sock and then uh, Roger and Jack Sock. So three videos in one. All right, so uh, currently uh, ready position, taking a split step. Uh, right off the bat, check out this difference. Notice how Roger Federer's racket is on edge. He is in a continental grip as he receives the ball. You know, when, when you have an Eastern forehand grip, the the adjustments aren't as substantial as maybe if you had a Western grip. You'll see that later with Jack Sock. Um, so my question for you is, and if you have an Eastern forehand grip, when you're receiving the ball, do you wait in this continental grip, right? So Federer has a uh, Eastern grip for his forehand. He also has a one-hand backhand, so when he switches over to his backhand grip, he doesn't have as far a, as an adjustment as someone like Djokovic, who's in a semi-Western grip. So that's why I think you see him waiting here with the racket on edge. Now, notice Djokovic, right? He His racket angle is a little bit more closed, and it looks like his hand position is all leaning towards that semi-Western grip. So just a subtle little difference there between the two grips, but I thought you'd find it interesting. All right, so let's look at the grip change and then the unit turn. So they see the incoming ball. One other thing, too, a little uh, uh, information is Federer and Djokovic are both hitting. They're receiving like a neutral ball. They're not really being pushed on this. And their intent is to is to hit a neutral ball back. Now, Jack Sock, you'll see in his video how he's he's backing up and absorbing the ball and being a little bit more aggressive with the shot. Uh, so just a little background information there. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the unit turn. So just notice the position here, how Roger Federer's racket is a little bit more vertical. Djokovic is, is you know, the, the it's, it's tipped forward a little more. So just a subtle little difference. I'm not saying one way is better than the other, but um, <clears throat> unique to each individual. All right, so let's go ahead. I want you to look right here when Djokovic re releases his racket or his non-hitting hand. See that position there? So he's starting to release. But what I want you to see is notice how his strings are already showing towards the camera. Federers are still kind of tilted to the front and to the side. And once again, that is a byproduct of the grip. So they both have released here. And racket, they both use a loop on their forehand. And let's go ahead and look in the loading position, another little signature spot on the forehand. Uh, so look at the difference again. Notice how Djokovic's strings are pointing to the back fence. And let's look at Federer's strings. They're kind of pointing to the side and back. So another little difference uh, due to the grip. You'll see, too, like with, with Jack Sock in this position, his strings, too, are facing back. Uh, Kini Shikori, who has a Western grip, his strings are facing back. So they both do a nice job here with the non-hitting hand, how is it, it's extended and to the side. Notice Federer's hand, or his arm, is kind of a little bit more vertical. Djokovic is a little bit more horizontal in this position. But they do a nice job of getting over their feet. Djokovic is more in a square stance. Uh, Federer will go into an open stance because he is getting pushed to the right here a little bit. All right, so let's look at the racket drop. A similar position here. Notice how the strings are 
pointing towards the ground. Federer does, um, he does have a tendency to keep that racket head more to the right side of his body. Notice how uh, Djokovic's racket head is uh, maybe a little further back behind him. Just a subtle, subtle little difference. Let's go ahead. There's the drop. Federer is known to get a lot of lag on his forehand. Um, you can let's watch at his rack. Let's look at his racket lag here. So, see that racket start to the see how it's to the um, right of his hand, and then as he pulls forward, it goes to the inside of his hand. Uh, the other thing too is you'll see when they make contact. There's the contact point. Notice how Djokovic's hand is higher and Federer's is lower. Remember earlier in the video how Federer, when he was prepping and he released, his non-hitting hand was high and low? So it's like a little give and take here. Now Djokovic's hand is high and Federer's is low. So thought you find that interesting. Let's look at the intent here now. So they go to the ball. Good position here, too. Now, here's another difference. Federer is in a straight arm position. Djokovic is in a double bent position with his forehand. And um, interesting thought. Can you have a straight arm position with a Western grip? I've never seen it. Usually when we see the straight arm position, it's either with an Eastern or semi-Western grip. So straight arm position... You know, we've got Federer in a straight arm position. Dimitrov uses a straight arm. Nadal uses straight arm, but he's semi-Western. Uh, but what are your thoughts? Can you be in a straight arm position in a Western grip? I don't think so, but I'd be interested in your comments below. Now, Djokovic is hitting more of a flat ball. And uh, Federer is going to hit with more topspin. So he's hitting with the lower third of the racket. And notice how his face is uh, is slightly closed, and that's also due to hitting with the bottom third. You kind of see how the face closes here after contact. All right, and, and Federer is hitting with more topspin. Look at the difference here. Watch this. Look where Federer's racket is already after a few frames after contact. Notice how it's already coming to the left side of his body. Djokovic is still on the right side of his body with his racket head. Uh, so uh, a lot more acceleration on the follow through here. Um, with Federer as opposed to, to Djokovic. Federer does a nice job of just keeping, notice how he just keeps his chin down. That's like a signature position with him. Djokovic is already starting to pull up and look straight ahead. And there's the finish. Look at how Federer's already brought that racket, wrapped it around his body, and Djokovic is just getting there. So he had a lot more racket head acceleration uh, on the follow through than, than, than Djokovic. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to Djokovic versus Jack Sock. All right, so on the left we have Novak Djokovic who uses a semi-Western grip on his forehand and on the right we have Jack Sock who is most definitely in a Western grip where that base knuckles on bevel five on the index finger. Uh, so look at huge difference here. Now, do want to point out Jack Sock is receiving a ball deep and he will back up considerably. I mean, look at where he's standing now and compared to the baseline. And then you'll see when he makes contact, the difference uh, in contact point uh, in relation to the, the baseline. Uh, so um, let's go ahead and look at the unit turn here as they prep. And I mean, just notice as Sock's receiving the ball, he's already in a Western grip. Uh, Djokovic, his racket angle is closed. Uh, leaning towards that semi-Western grip. Uh, now, Djokovic is hitting a neutral ball. Uh, but notice how Jack Sock, and I've noticed this in his hand, non-hitting hand's not even on the racket head. Now, Nisha Corey, who has a Western grip, he does keep it on there. So different strokes for different folks, but a big, big uh, difference as far as the preparation. But Jack Sock, let's give him credit. The racket head is up here in this position as he's uh, receiving the ball. Now, as they release, uh, notice Djokovic here. 
he releases, and notice his non-hitting hand is already off the racket. Jack Sock is putting his hand back on the racket, so they're doing the exact opposite here in this position. Uh, I'm going to... Gonna move Jack Sock, adjust him a little bit since he's backing up. All right, so let's go ahead. Um, Novak Djokovic here. Notice how when he shows the strings to the back fence. There, Sock does the same thing. See this position here. So that racket head is showing to the back fence, but in this position, notice how his hand and racket head are almost like in line here. Like the racket is parallel to the ground in this position. Uh, and, and Nishikori does something very similar in this position as well. So they're loading um, and, uh, and uh, they show those strings to the back fence. Now, notice... Um, where Djokovic is in relation to the baseline, right? Jack Sock is backed up considerably here. And with that Western grip, I that's where I think they need to play with the Western grip. You rarely see someone with the Western grip hugging that baseline because they just don't have time. They're taking these, these big cuts at the ball. And in order to do that, they need to back up to, to do that. So anyway, uh, I thought you'd find that interesting. All right, so... Racket has um, showing the back, showing to the back fence. Let's look at the drop. Now it's amazing. Look at this. They're in very similar positions, right? So um, it truly is amazing. Like the way they get to this position is completely different, but they get there, and that's why as coaches, I think it's so important that. We need to make sure we're trained and we're mindful um, that it's okay to have a stroke that's maybe not exactly like Djokovic's or Sox or Federer's. The human, uh, the human body is amazing. The brain, it, it will get there. All right, so they've dropped. Now look at look at this position here. Notice how Jack Sock how he contorts that arm, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, you know, you look at Djokovic's arm, he just looks a lot more relaxed compared to, to Jack Sock. And uh, my friend Chuck Tomlin, who's a subscriber on YouTube, he's not a fan of the Western grip either because he thinks it's so difficult, right, and challenging to find that ball. And, and, um, and I think you're just more susceptible to injury in this position here. So um, a racket head drops. And then there's the contact point. Uh, once again, they're both in a double bent position. Jack Sock is more so than than uh, than Djokovic, but they both rotated their shoulders. Uh, they're finding that ball. Notice the different contact zone here too. Uh, notice how Djokovic is right above the knee, and uh, Jack Sock's finding that ball above his above his waist. Let's look at the follow through. And once again, look at the difference. Look where Jack Sock's racket, how he's really accelerated up and across. And Djokovic still has that racket head on the right side of his body or that, that right side of the plane. And then there's the finish. So big, big difference uh, as far as the semi-Western and Western grip. Let's go ahead and look at, um, we're going to go ahead and look at Federer and Jack Sock's forehand. Okay, let's go ahead and compare Federer and Jack Sock. And uh, to really show you the contrast in the two strokes, I'm actually, I panned out so we can see the baseline. And they're both in the contact position here. So I'll go ahead and uh, let's move it forward. Um, so like I've said uh, in, in, in the previous um, comparison, just look at Federer. Right, he's in that continental grip as he's receiving, and that racket's on edge. Notice uh, Jack Sock how um, he's got that. Uh, he's already in the Western grip, and just also notice his position in relation to the baseline. He's a lot closer than Federer in this position, right? Um, now, let's go ahead and pr uh, move forward with the video, and. Uh, Let's go ahead and look at that unitor. Now, notice how Sock's uh, absorbing the ball, right? Look at how he's kind of 
moving away from the baseline. Both get into a, let's look at that trophy pose here. So look at that racket head. Now, like I said, Jack Sock is a little more dynamic, right? He's, um, he's hitting a neutral ball here and backing up. So that's going to change the technique. But you can see some of the signature positions here where that racket head is up, right? Non-hitting arm will be Jack Sock will release it here. So it gets horizontal here, right? So very similar position as far as the non-hitting arm. But look at the racket angle here. So Joe, Jack Sox is pointing towards the back fence. Federer's is pointing to the ground. Let's see where, I want you to see too in this video with Jack Sock. Look where the ball bounces. So it's really close to the baseline. Hence the reason why he's really backing up. So look at the position here. Now watch Sock. So this is a huge difference here. Look at Sock. Strings are pointing back. Federer is already pointing towards the ground. And then let's look at that leg. And then once again, somehow they align and the strings are pointing to the ground. Let's go ahead and look at it as they pull forward to the ball. They both are rotating their shoulders. You can see how they both got pulled to the right a little bit. And the reason why I say that is just notice how that their left foot is coming off the ground. Jack sock more so, right? But uh, here's where Federer is in that straight arm position. And um, Jack sock is in that double bent position. Let's go ahead and look at the follow through. So they're both imparting a lot of top spin here. And notice how their racket heads are kind of in line as far as the timing. So they're pulling and it's already breaking the, the plane and they're already, starting to come, they're already starting to come to the left side of their body. Notice too here how Federer, how he still has his chin on the contact point. Look where that ball is. It's already well off the racket. And notice Jack Sock, how he's already starting to look forward. If I don't know when, I, when I'm playing, I really try to emulate uh, Federer after contact and keeping that chin and that head nice and steady and keeping keeping it down on the contact point as long as possible. If I can give you one tip that will I think will improve your game so much, try keeping that chin and your eyes fixated on that contact point well past the ball, uh, you know, um, being gone. It helps in golf as well if you're a golfer. All right, so they're pulling up and across. They're both imparting good topspin. And then look at the finish here. They both get to that position where they wrap that racket around and they really rotate those hips and shoulders. All right, I hope this helps. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, it is a lot of information. Maybe, uh, you know, watch it again and maybe you'll pick up a tip or two from it. If you like the video, please hit the like button below. If you really like it, please share it with your friends, family, coaches, players. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to get my latest videos. Thanks so much.